It's taken me years to assemble the perfect home studio, and after trying so many mics, preamps, monitors, and even rooms, I finally put together what I consider to be my personal dream home studio. Let's break it down piece by piece, talk about why I chose what I did, and take a look inside what I call the Stormtrooper Room. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by anybody. No brand is paying me to push their product. These are my personal preferences I've developed after years of using different home studio gear. That said, if you end up finding this video helpful and want to help support my small channel, you can do so by using the links in the description below where I've literally posted links to everything you see in my setup. It really does make a difference. So let's start off with the most important part of my home studio that really takes things from sounding average or even bad to amazing and professional. Nope, it's not the microphone, it's my acoustic treatment and full complement of GIK acoustic bass traps. I consider acoustic treatment to be so important that I'm going to list it as the top link in the description to help you get where you need to go. And because I'm in a small 9x12 room, the thicker the panel the better, so I've outfitted my entire space with bass traps. From thick impression series tri traps in the corners to 5.25 inch thick 244 panels on the side walls, I've ensured there's enough treatment to deliver solid results down into those bass frequencies. I've seen so many home studios that just throw up foam on the walls or in the corners and that might help when it comes to echoes for recording vocals, but if you plan to mix in your room and you want to address those low end bass frequencies, that's just not going to cut it. I've also seen studios have zero treatment and slap a foam cover over the microphone thinking it'll eliminate the room noise and well, I've tested one myself and nothing's going to come close to having actual acoustic panels on your walls. Treat your room properly, you won't even need a mic booth because your room will sound so good you can record vocals and mix bass heavy music in the same space. With that out the way, let's talk about my vocal chain and what I use to capture the sound that goes in before we talk about how I listen to the sound that comes out. As you can see from my YouTube videos, I use a Shure SM7B on a Warm Audio WAMBA boom arm. It's easy to adjust, making positioning very versatile, and I find that I never need to buy a cloud lifter or a signal booster as most interfaces have enough gain to properly power the mic, and with a little post-processing, there's just not a need to spend extra money. When it comes to the mic I've chosen for vocals, I use the Neumann TLM-49. It's not because it's a Neumann, it's not because it's expensive, it's because throughout all the years of using different microphones from Rode, AKG, Blue, Mojave, and more, I've found the TLM-49 fits my sibilant voice the best. So how do you find the right mic for you? Try as many different mics as you can, and with experience and time, you're bound to come across one that just makes you sound great. With great power comes great responsibility, and with a great mic should come an amazing preamp. And that's why I've gone with my spidey senses and have chosen the AMS Neve 1073 SPX. Not only am I going to get some authentic Neve flavor, but I can use the EQ section if I prefer to sculpt the sound I'm going for even more. Now there's a lot of preamps out there and a lot of Neve clones, but you can't go wrong with a Neve 1073 SPX. From the mic to the preamp and now into the compressor, I've chosen to go with an LA-2A style compressor and I'm rocking the Warm Audio WA-2A. Because I don't have $5,000 laying around for a Teletronics LA-2A, I found this Warm Audio clone to be the best bang for the buck and gets me that easy to use, dial it in till it sounds good flavor that helps glue everything together. Warm Audio's come a long way and has made strides in the quality of their products and I feel confident having the WA-2A in my rack. When it comes to my audio interface, this one's probably going to surprise some of you, but I use the Steinberg UR824, which was released almost 10 years ago. 10 years. By today's standard, this thing is a dinosaur, but let me tell you, it still sounds fantastic. Now, with audio interfaces, reviewers have gotten people so focused on specs and measurements that just because one interface has a little more preamp noise than another must mean it's bad, or if an interface has a higher dynamic range than yours, that means you need to upgrade. But the truth is, interface technology has gotten so good that you're probably not going to notice any audible difference at all. And if I can use this Tyrannosaurus Rex, then you can bet Jurassic that pretty much any modern interface will do. Buy based on your connectivity or form factor needs and start making music. 
My interface is hooked up to an M1 Mac Mini, and much like the interface, newer doesn't always mean you need it. Yes, there's an M2 Pro version out now, but the M1 still handles all my 4K video editing needs in Premiere, my photography needs in Lightroom and Photoshop, and my audio needs in Studio One without a hiccup, and until it doesn't, I'll still be rocking the M1. Connected to that is an Alienware AW3821DW 38-inch ultra-wide 1600p gaming monitor. It's 100% sRGB which handles my photo and video editing needs, has plenty of screen real estate for all my editing, and since I plan to build a gaming PC, can also be used as a gaming monitor. It's the most versatile monitor I've found that could be my Swiss Army knife and tackle everything I want to do. It's currently on sale for $1000 and of course I'll drop that link. I have everything plugged into these Furman PL8C power conditioners which do their job at eliminating dirty power and noise you might get from plugging directly into the wall. In fact, I remember some years back I had a compressor and picked up what sounded like an AM radio station or some sort of feedback that having a power conditioner solved. They also add a little aesthetics here with these pull-out lamps that give my desk some extra drip. Am I too old to say drip? Speaking of the desk, most of us who own home studios use a spare bedroom in our apartment or house and therefore don't have a ton of space to work with and need a compact yet feature-packed desk to accommodate. Uh, thanks to Rap Audio, the LS840 Studio Desk does just that, and with their new white version, I was able to complete my Stormtrooper white aesthetic. With its double bay configuration, which allows up to 8 slots of rack space, you should be able to fit in all the gear you'd need for a home studio. Now I've got the optional monitor mount add-ons on the side in case I want to add a smaller reference pair and the height adjustable keyboard shelf where I store my Mac Mini and iPad. It's not just the keyboard shelf as the entire desk is height adjustable, which means on its lowest setting I don't have to stare up at my monitor because it sits too high like I would with other rack mount desks. I talked about acoustic treatment and how important it is. Well, once you've got your room treated, the studio monitors you use are going to make a huge difference in your mixing ability and your final product. Of all the studio monitors I personally owned, I found no other monitor provides such a crystal clear clinical sound while still having a warm 3D and punchy image like the Atom Audio A7Vs. Bass reproduction is amazing, mids and highs are crisp, it's everything I could ask for in a monitor and had me sell off my two pair setup in favor of just these. But whatever you buy, just remember they're only going to sound as good as your room. They also sound as good as whatever you have them on and I have the pleasure of owning these special order all white SDM50X studio monitor stands from Rab Audio. On the top they've got these built in Projax rubber feet which eliminate the need for something like isoacoustic stands and have these chunky big bottom cabinets made specifically for adding sand or sandbags which when combined with the Projax feet on top deliver pro grade isolation. They're also height adjustable, they really did think of everything with this design. So we've got the white desk, monitor stands, and the wallpaper, but I feel like there's one more element we can add to really kick off that Stormtrooper vibe. Because every captain needs his chair, thanks to Secret Lab I can command my sessions in style with this Stormtrooper design Titan Evo gaming chair that really brings the whole room together. From its intricate side stitching and blue accent threading to the empire symbol on the front and back, nothing screams dun 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 like sitting in this beautiful throne of a chair. When it comes to chair aesthetics, Secret Lab is king. A few extra tidbits I haven't covered. I use a BenQ Halo screen bar as my light bar on my monitor. The Logitech G502 wireless gaming mouse and G915 wireless gaming keyboard are my preferred peripherals. And this Versace style rug which covers most of the floor that I always get asked about. Like everything else in this video, I'll be sure to post links to all of it in the description below to make it easy to find. Now let me know in the comments below what you think of my setup, if there's anything you would change or improve upon, and feel free to ask any questions you might have. If nothing else, I hope this video inspires you and gives you ideas on putting together your own home studio space. If it does, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell as I'll have more setup videos in the future. Now that's going to wrap things up for today, so until next time, thank you for watching, stay tuned, and have yourself a great rest of your day.